So he won't see that I want and I need him. Everything that we should be. Oh, but she's beautiful. That girl he talks about, and she's got everything that I have to live without. Drew talks to me. I laugh 'cause it's just so funny. I can't even see anyone when he's with me. He says he's so in love. He's finally got it right. I wonder if he knows he's all I think about at night. He's the reason for the teardrops on my guitar. The only thing that keeps me wishing on a wishing star. He's the song in the car. I keep singing, don't know why I do. Hey, how you doing, Justin? Here today we are checking out "Teardrops on My Guitar" by Taylor Swift. Uh, very, very easy acoustic tune. This one, lots of fun to play. Uh, we need a capo on the third fret. It's the first thing you want to make sure you get down. Now, let me run through the chords first of all. They're fairly straightforward, and we do that little trick where we're holding two fingers down the whole time. So, uh, we start off with the big G chord using the, all four fingers. Um, very often, I leave off my first finger of this G, actually, to tell the truth. So, uh, the full chord would be three, two, open, open, three, three, right? But as I said, usually I just lift off my first finger, so it's going three, nothing. So the underneath of my second finger is muting that uh, fifth string. Open, open, third fret, third fret, relative to the capo, of course. So that would be the G. If you lift off that that first finger, it becomes actually, I guess, technically it's a G5 chord, but we can just think of it as G, right? And you can either put that first finger down or not. It doesn't really make a whole heap of difference. Uh, so that's the first chord. Now the second chord we're going to look at is an E minor seven, and to, if you've got the full G, all you need to do is move your second finger to the second fret of the fourth string. So you've got zero two two zero three three. So that's one advantage of leaving that first finger down, is it makes that chord change very simple. Uh, then we've got a C add nine chord. Very easy again. Don't be put off ever by chords having big names. Uh, and to do that, we move our second finger to the third fret of the fifth string, and our first finger to the second fret of the fourth string. And we don't play the thicker string. So again, with this chord, the trick here is to make sure that the tip of your second finger is just muting the thicker string. Right? That's a, kind of a big deal. We don't want that lowest string ringing out when we play that chord. So we got nothing. Three, two, open, three, three. And the last chord that we've got for this song is a D with an F sharp bass. Now to do this one, or it's a D sus four with an F sharp bass, which would make it D eleven with an F sharp bass. Whatever, loads of different complicated names for this chord, but uh, as long as you're playing the right one, it doesn't really matter. And for this one, we've moved our first finger over to the thicker string in the second fret, and our second finger in the second fret of the third string. But we've left those. Third and fourth fingers where they are for the whole time. So this would be two, nothing. So we're muting that A string again with the underneath of the first finger this time. Two, nothing. Open, second fret, third, third. That's the D with an F sharp bass or D sus four over F sharp. Depends. Loads of different names for it. Uh, so that's the chord. So you got G, E minor, C, and D over F sharp. That's how I kind of think of it. We don't have to worry about all of those big names. It's just simple chords, right? Now, there's three chord sequences that you have to learn for this song. The first one, which is used for the intro and the verses, is G, E minor, C, D over F sharp, and that's for the verses. Sharp bass that we should be. And now we're into the pre-chorus. 
which is the chord sequence is E minor, C, G, to D with an F sharp bass. So that sequence again for the pre-chorus is E minor, C, G, and D with an F sharp bass. So that first sequence is played three times, which is G, E minor, C, D with an F sharp bass. So that's for the intro and the verse. Then we've got what we call a pre-chorus, which actually this time doesn't go to a pre-chorus, it goes back to a verse, but never mind. Uh, goes E minor, C, G, D with an F sharp bass. Okay, so that sequence is just played through once. And then we've got the chorus, which is going G, D with an F sharp bass, E minor, to C. And it does that again. G, D with an F sharp bass, E minor, to C. Now, before I just play through that little section, other thing is the strumming, of course, really important. And in this song, it's really easy. It's just continuous down and up strumming. Now, to get it just like the record, if you're kind of a progressing guitar player, you need to think a little bit more about accents, like which ones are played slightly harder than the others. But it's not very consistent all of the way through. It's kind of playing off the melody a bit. So the best way to learn that kind of thing is listening and experimenting yourself and trying to get a feel for it. Because it's, it's got to be about that eventually. It's, it's the feeling of it, not just the, the kind of the maths of it, if you like. So uh, that's the chord sequences. Pretty simple, huh? So let me play through now the intro and the verses. I'll kind of do some uh, dodgy vocaling along and singing the chord stuff for you. Uh, three, four, G. E minor. C. D with an F sharp bass. Verse one, G. G, E minus, F, C, I, D with an F sharp bass, so he won't G. I, E minor, and I, C, D with an F sharp bass into the pre chorus, E minus seven now, then it's to C at nine, G. And then it's the same thing. I just can't get up there. Sorry, guys. I'm well aware it sounds awful, and probably your cat's kind of hiding in the corner with its paws over its ears. But anyway, we're in the verse two now. C, D with an F sharp bass into the pre-chorus, E minor. F sharp bass and into the chorus, so G. D with an F sharp bass, E minor to C. G is the song, and the D with an F sharp bass, I keep singing, don't know. E minor, I see. And then we're back into the verse. So Really, this tune's pretty simple. The strumming couldn't be easier, just continuous eighth note strumming. If you want to make it more complicated and think about the accents and really trying to get the groove on, it gets a little bit more complicated, but that's up to you. Uh, chord sequences, there's only three. Very simple, if you've got the songbook there, as long as you've got your capo on and you know those chord sequences, then you're away with this tune. Lovely song, actually. Really um, well-written tune. I um, hope you enjoy playing it, and I'll see you for another lesson very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.